G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, interesting story here, regulation. You know, it's the, the naughty word <laughs> in cryptocurrencies. You know, one of the words that a lot of people fear. But look, I think Raul, Raul Paul said it pretty well. You know, if you want to get mega rich on crypto, we need regulation. It's just as simple as that. That is what's going to bring the really big money in. And look, we've got some regulation, but there's further regulation uh, that is needed uh, for you know other cryptocurrencies. Now, what we definitely don't want is over-regulation. I think we can all agree on that. But we do need some. And look, we've got some, but we need some more. Uh, and that will sort of help the space, particularly around DeFi and things like that. Uh, and, you know, of course, XRP and, and some other cryptos out there. Uh, and it sounds like we're probably going to get it fairly soon. And look, a lot of this starts in the US. Once the US, you know, make their regulatory laws, then the rest of the world, you know, sort of tends to follow. So let's read on. Top US banking regulator reveals positive cryptocurrency regulation coming within weeks. Now, this is already a couple of days old. So uh, there's talk that it'll be done before uh, Trump's administration is over, which is around about February next year. All right. Top US banking regulator has confirmed that positive cryptocurrency regulation is coming in a matter of weeks by the end of the Trump term. It's going to uh, work for everybody, said the regulator, adding that the new regulation will make it easier for crypto investors to know how to invest, therefore attracting more institutional investors. So, I mean, that's where it all starts. The institutional uh, investors get in first. You know, there's always some people that get in before the institutions, but that's generally when you know it's going mainstream and the really big money is going to start to flow in. Uh, new US regulation will work for everybody, is what he says. Acting Comptroller of the Currency, Brian Brooks, answered some questions about the upcoming US cryptocurrency regulation in, inter in an interview with CNBC's Scorkbox on Friday. Brooks is the administrator of the federal banking system and the chief officer of the Officer of the Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC. The OCC uh, supervises nearly 1,200 national banks, federal savings associations and federal branches of foreign banks that conduct approximately 70% of all banking uh, business in the US. Regarding the new US, US cryptocurrency regulation, Brooks said, we're very focused on getting this right. We are very focused on not killing this and it is equally important that we develop the networks behind Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as it will prevent money laundering and terrorism financing, uh, he elaborated. Look, and I totally agree with it. They do need to get it right. You know, you don't want to kill uh, Bitcoin and he's come out saying that, you know, no one's going to ban Bitcoin. So here. Nobody is going to ban Bitcoin. Nobody is going to ban some of these transmission technologies. So I think it's going to be a lot less bad than our people worry about. Now look, <laughs> famous last words sometimes. Uh, that could be just a bit of a ruse and it goes the other way, although I believe what he's saying. But look, just don't count it out. Now this is uh, something I found really interesting here. When asked about whether he believes more regulation will benefit uh, the crypto industry, the OCC chief said, I don't think we need 50 regulations uh, instead of two, but what we need is clarity about what's allowed. So I agree. You know, you know we don't need 50 regulations or 100 regulations or 1,000 regulations, uh, and we don't need just one or two regulations either. It's about finding that even balance and just so it's clear what the rules are, you know, what's allowed and what's not allowed, but not, you know, over scrutinizing it and, you know, over regulating it, that it just stifles any innovation, any growth. Growth is what we need. Growth is what we want. But it can't be the, you know, the way it's been the old wild, wild west days, you know, the ICO days of 2017, where it was just, you know, scam after scam, rug pull after rug pull. And look, we've had a few this year already with uh, some platforms coming out. But you can guarantee that someone's probably going to follow up with them. Uh, and if they're big enough, you know, the smaller ones may just kind of be somewhat ignored. But anything that was of reasonable size... Someone's going to come after them at some stage and they will have to, you know, deal with those consequences. So I, for one, uh, am positive about regulation. Uh, I, I hope, And I, again, I hope they get it right. I think they need to get it right. And we definitely don't need 50 different regulations. 
but we need you know probably more than two regulations you know it's finding that even balance uh, and once you know institutions have that clarity then they really will start to pile in because they haven't piled in yet this is just the big early adopters that are getting in and building a you know a footprint and that's why the regulations are coming because they're all you know talking these big institutions are talking with the chief of the ACC uh, you know politicians and all the rest of it and they're like we're getting into this we need you to regulate this you know so we can make squillions and billions and trillions of dollars and all the rest of it and that's unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it the way that it works and look again I'm, I'm fine with regulation we definitely need it we can't have that wild wild west type stuff I just don't want them to over regulate it and really kill it all right another one bring back the bits so for those of you who don't know, you know, they talk about uh, stacking sats, satoshis. Well, there's also bits. Uh, satoshis are hundred millionths of a bitcoin, and bits are millionths of a bitcoin. Uh, and we'll go through this article, uh, and I tend to agree that I think bits are probably better for people to understand in general. You know, sats, and they're like, oh god, one one hundredth of a million. You know. Yeah, it just makes it too hard. If we break it down into, uh, you know, millionths of a Bitcoin, uh, I think it'll work a lot well. So here we go. Blockstream CEO Adam Back said that the Satoshi unit of measurement, of measurement, the SAT, is too confusing. He said using bits to measure fractions of a Bitcoin is far easier. Crypto Twitter seemed to agree with him, and I agree too. But look, I'm not hating on SATs. So I've been around for a little while, so I can use SATs. But I just think for mainstream adoption, if we go to bits, it'll be a lot easier. I think that, you know, people will wrap their head around that quicker. But look, it's not to say they couldn't wrap their head around head around sats either. It's just, um, you know, a, you know, there's more of them basically. It's the easiest way to put it. Adam Back, CEO of blockchain technology company Blockstream, has said that Bitcoiners should forget about the Satoshi unit uh, of measurement known as the SAT. The computer scientists yesterday wrote on Twitter that it was time for a bits reboot and that sats, i.e. satoshis, are confusing, and for most they are. Satoshi, named after Bitcoin's anonymous creator, uh, satoshis, are units measuring the smallest amount of Bitcoin, one one hundred millionth, or there you go, one one hundred millionth of a coin. But according to Back, who has been studying Bitcoin since its inception, we should revert back to using bits as the smallest unit of measurement because it's easier. Bits measure one millionth of a coin. Uh, so yeah, one, one millionth of a coin. One millionth is much easier than 100 million, 100 million base, he wrote. Uh, even uh, Bitcoin QT Core had bits for years. Uh, back went on to say a Bitcoin is too expensive uh, Bitcoin is too expensive, but sats are too many. Uh, sound cheap and confusing. That even confused me when I was saying that. That's hard to figure out what you bought, he said. Know that if the price of Bitcoin reaches one million, a bit will uh, still be cheap at one dollar. And that's really where it kind of makes sense. You know, a million dollar Bitcoin or one bit is one dollar. But, you know, then it starts to go up. Uh, and it changes. He also said that there has been universal newcomer confusion with buying fractions of a Bitcoin and that you still have sats, uh, just bits and bit cents, aka sats like dollars and cents. Yeah, I'd have to agree. You know, uh, bits uh, and bit cents, yeah, makes it sound like dollars and cents. For, for the for the mainstream adoption at the moment, I definitely think that's the way to go. But look, way, way down the future, and I don't know how far we're talking, but probably beyond my lifetime time and yours, they'll probably go back to Satoshis because they'll be breaking it down into even smaller bits again. The population will have grown so much and it'll be so widely dispersed. But, you know, time will tell. But I did find that an interesting read because I didn't know uh, that there was a bits to Bitcoin. I've always known of Satoshis. Uh, but I didn't know there were bits. And again, for me, it was quite hard to wrap my head around that. I definitely agree. Bits would have made so much more sense. A bit, oh yeah, it's like one millionth. But one one hundred millionth, you know, you're just like, oh God, Satoshis and try and add them up. But look, I've been around the space for a while and you know, I'm used to Satoshis. So yeah, it won't really make any difference to me. But for the wider adoption, I definitely think bits would probably be a bit easier. But you know, who knows? Maybe they can get on board with sats. All right, let's refresh this market cap. So 578 billion, what's happened in the, you know, 
15, 20 minutes since I uh, originally did that. Still sitting around the, around the same. Now we can see Bitcoin, it's still just fluctuating. It gets up to around that 19,000 kind of 400-ish dollar level uh, and just starts a retracement. And so it's doing lots of sideways movement. And look, if Bitcoin continues to do this for a while, expect altcoins to really fire. That's generally what happens when Bitcoin gets in a bit of a ranging pattern and goes sideways. That's when altcoins really start to pump. And look, altcoins have been doing pretty good for a while, but some of them are still, you know, not getting back to their old all-time highs of, you know, a few months ago. Let's say sort of back around August, uh, sort of September time. But gas, 25, not bad, not great. BTC uh, dominance, again, it just sits around that kind of, you know, 61, 62% level. It can fluctuate up and down a little bit. But it's because the market's moving sideways at the moment that uh, it's just kind of hanging there. You know, the market itself is unsure and they're waiting for a, a trend direction to let them know which way they should go. All right, what about big movers? Nothing really. I'm not saying there's no movers. It definitely has. We've got plenty of green here, which is good, but nothing big. Block stack, nice. I'm glad they're uh, doing well. We can see that really big dip here, but starting to make their way back. Aragon, Hedera Hashgraph, I'm glad that they're uh, finally doing well. Uh, I'm in the red with those, <laughs> unfortunately, but what can you do? Ren, Ren is still looking super juicy on the charts, and we're going to get to it soon. Uh, XRP, it was down around 55 I think 56 cents uh, and has made its way back up. I think I've got some at 56 or 58 cents. I can't remember exactly which one because I'm buying it in Australian and then trying to convert it back to uh, US dollars. But I think it was about 56, maybe 57 cents uh, US that I bought it. So pretty happy with that. Right, losers. Any big losers? Nah, still the same as well. Don't get me wrong, you know, there's some losses, but in, you know, crypto terms, these really aren't too much, you know, and especially for something like this. It's lost 8.9% in 24 hours. It's made some of that back in an hour, but look how well it did over seven days. So, yeah, not too bad. Uh, all in all, you know, the losses are small. We don't have any double-digit losses in the top 100, outside of the top 100. Different story. All right, I want to go have a look at some charts that we were looking at a while ago. Again, chain link. In the dollar sense, against the dollar, it's still doing all right and slowly creeping up. And now this is against Bitcoin. It has just been getting tighter and tighter. This has kind of been, you know, the average sort of price uh, in this uh, kind of movement. Uh, and it's wicked off this a ton of times. Uh, not a ton of times, but a couple of times. And now it's gone down below and it's hit this greater trend line though. I mean, this is the greater trend line. You know, we break below this red line and that means... You know, we could consider Chainlink to be in a bearish sort of narrative, at least against Bitcoin. But every time it's come and touched this, it's, you know, had a parabolic move. So we're waiting to see, is it going to do the same again? And we can see it is just hugging this line at the moment. Absolutely hugging it. Uh, and again, now it's sitting on that kind of, you know, support resistance. You know, it's been support and resistance. It was resistance here, resistance here. Uh, didn't quite make it down to here, so it was support, 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 and uh, just, it was a bit of a fake out below, and now it's sitting right on that support range, and I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen. Is this going to, you know, do what it's done in the past and make another parabol parabolic move, or are we going to actually break out uh, and, you know, break this upward trend? Again, this is just against Bitcoin, not against the dollar. The dollar, it's still going up. Uh, you know, slowly but surely, but this is against Bitcoin. I'm waiting to see if this is, you know, the key where it's going to start to move. And again, if Bitcoin just keeps ranging uh, in this kind of, you know, 19,000, you know, almost 20,000 to 18,000, let's say 19,400 to sort of 18,500 level, altcoins are going to really start to rally. That's going to be a mini alt season. And we've already somewhat sort of had it. Uh, and that might be the key for Chainlink to really pump. Synthetics, looking very similar. It's been kind of ranging for a while and it's broke out of here, but it's just kind of going sideways at the moment. You know, we could draw a little bit of a trend line here. We could go from sort of here. We won't use the wicks for this one. We're gonna go 
up there. Let's change this to white because it's a new trend. And let's get it to this. All right, so that's the new trend. Now it's going up. If it breaks this, it's, you know, it's bearish in terms of this upward trend. It's not bearish. It's bearish if we break down here or again go back down under this green line because this was the line we had to break out for it to be bullish. So doing better against Bitcoin because this is it just keeps falling, falling. Again, it found its bottom, rallied up, dropped back down below. Now it's rallied out and now we have a clear break of this kind of, you know, downward trend line against Bitcoin. So it is in the green. Now we're just waiting to see if it will follow this or if it's going to have its next par parabolic move. Uh, you know, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. Right, Aave has been looking pretty nice. So again, I've got this as a red line. This was the old channel that it was in. So this was the green line. We needed to break out of this to break out of the downward trend and that means things were now positive. Uh, and this was that downward trend. If we break down below this, then things really were going to get bearish and negative. We break out to the upside. Sweet. We can get rid of these lines. Uh, may as well do that now. We don't really need these anymore because they're null and void. This is our new trend. So here it's red. Now don't get me wrong, as long as it keeps following this uh, red line, uh, it's, it's bullish. But if we break onto the other side of this red line, then it's bearish against Bitcoin. So at the moment, it's looking pretty promising. Uh, and, you know, we could maybe draw another little bit of a trend line sort of over here and just go, all right. This is what we have here. Now, these are sometimes are considered bearish, uh, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. This is on the daily, really, if you wanted to uh, chart this on a more short-term kind of trend, you'd go into the 15 minutes and the hourly and things like that. But anyway, at the moment, you know, it's looking like until at least somewhere up here, almost where it was before against Bitcoin, uh, is looking pretty promising. Um, but after that, you know, possibly we drop back down again. Again, but again, that's not against the dollar. In the dollar terms, it's still generally going up. It is against Bitcoin, so how it performs against Bitcoin. Ren, 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 this is looking... <laughs> So good. Again, this red trend line here, it's held it. It's just you know, playing with it at the moment. And again, this white line here is roughly the average kind of median price for Ren. So it's holding that white line. It's holding this uh, trend line down here. And we're just waiting to see if it's going to break out above this uh, green. And then that means we really are sort of bullish. You know, we're outperforming Bitcoin. Uh, but nothing yet and again we might travel sideways and look at the moment it's just looking touch and go whether this may whether this rolls over and goes lower and all of a sudden you know creates a new trend line but at the moment it looks very promising you know if you're looking to go long or short this is a great opportunity to go you know either either you know you can put in your shorts and just say radio if it breaks this uh, red trend line here particularly this white so let's say at the moment uh, 1,671 sats. Uh, if Ren gets to there, short it because there's, you know, possibly going lower. Not guarantee though because, look, we can see it fakes out here. But, you know, this is just under the medium price line because you don't want it to just wick here and then find out it goes higher. So a little bit lower. You get to about here. Again, 1,660 something sats. If Ren makes it down here, then short it. And likewise, uh, you know, at the moment to long it, you really want it to break out of this uh, this line here. So you've got a long way to go before you would long it. But look, you could still long it down here because it's bouncing off here. So it's either going to go low or go high. It's, you know, it's unlikely it just keeps traveling sideways in this narrow little thing. So again, I don't leverage trade and I'm not advising you to. I'm just saying if you were into it, you know, this is looking like a sweet setup at the moment. Uh, you know, again, it's really got one or two ways it can go. It either goes up or it goes down. You've got to make your decision on what one you think it will do. Last but not least, all right, here we go. Big Daddy. Bitcoin. A lot of people are still, you know, a little bit sceptical about whether we're going to hold. I think this retracement, you know, was the retracement. Again, we can still see this is in a base, you know, in a kind of general uptrend. So let's, you know, we can go from here. 
and just push this up to there. This is still holding. Do we break out above it? Yep. And then we come back and retouch it. Break out above it and then we come back and retouch it. But in saying that, we're getting to a very fine point here where, look, maybe the buyer uh, exhaustion is over and this does roll back over and come back down here. Not saying it will. It's not my prediction, but it's just something we've got to keep in mind. Hence why I've got some cash on the side. I always keep a little bit of cash. If for whatever reason it does all of a sudden roll roll over and come back down and you know test this $13,800, $900 level, i.e. let's just round it off to $14,000 level, sweet, i got some cash, I'm going to buy some. And I won't throw all my money into that price. You know, you'd probably stage it and say, all right, you know, let's say it comes back down to here around $16,000. let us say I've got $1,000 to put into Bitcoin. If it comes down to $16,000, I put in $200. If it comes down to $15,000, then I put in $300. So now I'm up to $500. And if it comes down to $14,000, then maybe I'll put in my last $500 and there's the $1,000 and that's how I scale. And look, if it goes any lower, then I just don't have any fresh cash to put in. But I really do think it's unlikely that we go below this $13,000 level. And if we did, uh, again, I think it's more going to be around here, the $12,000 level. And I really don't think we would stay down here for very long at all. If it made this price or this price, I think uh, the buyer enthusiasm would come back in oh so quickly. I think, you know, again, micro strategy would be buying more. Grayscale would definitely be piling in buying more. You know, Sky Ridge, all, the, all those other kind of institutions, they are, you know, they're scaling in bit by bit. And if they see a big dump, they're just going to jump on it. And I think, you know, this is some market manipulation here, possibly by the uh, exchanges uh, to try and you know cancel all the longs. Uh, and likewise, there's very uh, few shorts at the moment, so they're not too worried about them. Uh, yeah, interesting times. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train, and I'll see you next time.